To secure Nigeria's land and maritime borders, the Nigerian Customs Service, Immigration Service, in collaboration with the Armed Forces of Nigeria, as well as the Nigerian Police Force and other security and intelligence agencies, commenced a joint border security exercise, codenamed Exercise Swift Response, in four geopolitical zones of the country. The exercise is being coordinated by the Office of the National Security Advisor and is aimed at better securing Nigeria's borders in order to strengthen the country's economy and address other transborder security concerns. Over time, Nigeria has been confronted with numerous transborder economic and security challenges. They range from banditry, kidnapping, smuggling, illegal migrants, and proliferation of light weapons, amongst others. Meanwhile, the preference for foreign goods, especially food items like rice, has continuously impoverished the country's farmers and adversely affected domestic government policies supporting the agricultural sector to enhance our food security. It is disturbing that some of Nigeria's neighboring countries circumvent the ECOWAS protocol on transit. Experience has shown that the erring neighbors do not comply with this protocol, with the implication that there has never been any legitimate transit trade between Nigeria on one hand and Benin and Niger on the other. The border closure would not have occurred if Nigeria's neighbors had complied with the various MOUs as well as the ECOWAS transit protocols including the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme. It is worth noting that there has never been any legitimate transit trade between Nigeria and the two countries. The ECOWAS protocol on transit demands that when a transit container built at the seaport, the receiving country is mandated to escort same without tampering with the seal to the border of the destination country. Unfortunately, experience has shown that our neighbors do not comply with this protocol. Rather, the seals of containers are broken at their ports and transload goods destined for Nigeria from the original container to trucks. Discussions on being legitimate trade between Nigeria on one hand and Benin and Niger and on the, and the other started in 2005. Discussions that led to the Miranda of Understandings in 2005, 2014. 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. In most cases, five containers loaded onto one truck and duty paid as one truck. This improper transloading of transit goods makes it impossible to properly examine such goods, resulting in importation of illicit goods. Many are calling the government's action to secure the nation's land and maritime borders a border closure, but it is not, as the borders have indeed not been closed. The border drill has only been designed to curb the mindless smuggling of banned goods into the country. Currently, there are ships loaded with rice waiting to discharge in Bene, and the target market is Nigeria for Christmas. We have MV Africana Jakana with 40,000 metric tons of rice, MV Zilos with 20,000 metric tons, and MV Sam Jaguar with 45,000 metric tons. The first visit was to the Seme border on November 25, 2019. The federal government team for the visit comprised the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Onyema, the Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Rauf Aregbeshola, the Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mr. Clement Agba, National Security Advisor, Baba Gana Mungunu, and Comptroller General of Nigerian Immigration Service. Mohammed Babandidi. They were accompanied by 30 journalists, covering the entire spectrum of the country's news media. Thus far, 38,743 bags of 50 kg parboiled foreign rice, 514 vehicles, 1,012 drums filled with PMS, 5,400 jerry cans of vegetable oil, 346 motorcycles, 10,553 jerry cans of PMS and 136 bags of NPK fertilizer used for making explosives have been seized, totaling 3.5 billion naira. In addition, an increase of 200 tons of container cargo, which was intended for round tripping, has come through the Lagos port terminal. The federal government delegation visited Customs Border Station in Magama Jibia in Katsina on a visit to Sector 4 of the ongoing border drill codenamed Exercise Swift Response. The drill has drastically curtailed the inflow of arms and ammunition. Bandits and terrorists are finding it hard to procure arms and ammunition and has recorded a reduction in cases of cattle rustling, kidnapping 
and armed banditry, which are predominant in the Northwest region. Arms and ammunition being used by violent extremists and criminal elements no longer make their way into the country through the land borders. There are hundreds of filling stations along the border. We counted many as we drove to the border this morning. They were set up purposely for smuggling. They don't sell the fuel consignment they receive to the public. Plus, 50% of them are owned by foreigners. Now that they are closed, we have recorded over 30% reduction in domestic fuel consumption. The smuggling of petroleum products, which has also been prominent through the borders in the northwest, has been curtailed due to the closure of filling stations along the border. The northwest sector, out of the four sectors affected by the drill, has recorded the highest success in terms of reduction of illegal migration. We said that on that occasion that the exercise wouldn't have been contemplated if our neighbors had complied with the various MOUs as well as the ECOWAS trade protocols, including ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme. We trace discussions on doing legitimate trade between Nigeria and our neighbors to 2005 and noted that the discussions led to MOUs in 2005, 2014, 2015, 2017 and 2018, none of which unfortunately led to any legitimate transit trade between Nigeria and on one hand and Benin and Niger on the other hand. As a result of the closure of the borders, the border drill exercise is not targeted at any region in the country. Neither is it designed to cripple businesses in any parts of the country as being insinuated in some quarters. Since the commencement of the exercise, local businesses across the country have continued to thrive as farmers and rice millers in particular are now having a high turnover in their investments. The advent of Operation Swift Response in August of this year, the NNPC reports that there has been a significant drop in petrol consumption of 6 million liters per day. Clearly, this volume of PMS has been the illegal daily sale to neighboring states. In addition, customs which used to record about 4.5 billion as revenue daily is now posting between 5 billion and 8 billion naira. The ongoing border drill that has largely curbed foreign rice smuggling into Nigeria has boosted rice production while fast-tracking the country's quest to achieve rice self-sufficiency. Quoting statistics from the Rice Millers Association, he said, Over 200,000 bags of rice were occupying spaces in the warehouses of virtually every integrated rice mill before the border drill started in August, while many small-scale rice holders or rice clusters had to abandon their small-scale but valuable means of livelihood. Chairman of Absar Rice Mill. Uh, you are welcome to my factory at Absar Rice Mill. As you see there, we will start uh, our meeting in the factory. This is the, our, one of our first stop for our party. We have capacity of about 200 uh, trailers here for the party. And we have five of this type. Uh, normally, we, we buy from the farmers and we keep it for, for our production. And we thank for the federal government that they are, they are encouraging us and the CBN. Uh, we collect some intervention from CBN, that's why we stock all this uh, stock here. And uh, we are milling, uh, our milling capacity is about 180 tons a day. I'm sure you understand what paddy rice is. This is the paddy, paddy rice. Paddy is the rice that comes straight from the farm. From the farmers. And sometimes you will see at least uh, 50 to 60 cars, uh, trucks outside, trucks. parking, and you see our scale there. We scale it and we, we upload it, then we pay their money. Every day we get at least 20 to 25 trucks here. And, uh, but uh, we wouldn't the have it here. Yeah, yeah. The story is really that before now, there is 60% capacity. Today, with the product not less than three months, they have 90% capacity. And then they tell us that even right now, they are expanding. You see it. And that they need even to take more land, take more plants, they have ordered even more equipment. That is the story. Farmers were even worse hit since the integrated rice millers, who were the off-takers, were already struggling to save their businesses by laying off staff 
and finding other means to pay off their bank loans. The Uh, <laughs> kuma ina so ku sani cewa gwamnati tana sane da mutanen kura domin nan ne ginshikin noman shinkafa a Kano kuma nan ne ginshikin sai da shinkafa a kasar gaba daya saboda haka abinda muke kokari don Allah don annabi ku ci gaba da wannan aiki naku na noman shinkafa ku ci gaba da gyara shinkafar ku mu a matsayin mu na gwamnati in Allah ya da za mu taimaka mu da abubuwan da kuke bukata da kuke nema noma shine tushen arzikin mu kuma noma shine yake rike da kasar na saboda haka kada wani ya zo ya gaya muku wata magana kuma muna murna da yadda hukar wannan magana da aka yi na rufe bauda din nan akan shigo da shinkafar nan daga yanzu magana muke a yadda muka ga kun kama hanya din nan wata killa hannan da shekara biyu sai dai mu aika da shinkafa waje ba ba mu kawo ta nan kasar ba so muna muku godiya kware da gaske kuma Allah ya mana jagora assalamu alaikum most of the rice that is being produced now here is being consumed in the south you know I have, I have just met somebody from Lagos and uh, has been here for two days getting his uh, wanting his trailer to be loaded. And that, that is a big achievement on the part of this country. You, and you can see that how the country is connected. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and God bless us. Thank you. This is a cluster of um, rice mills, mainly small holders rice mills. And these rice mills, these clusters, we have about 100 of them in Kano alone, like this. And the thing about this kind of cluster is that we can see how the backward integration is done. The rice farmers, the rice millers, the rice dealers. And you can see the sheer amount of jobs 
provided by these uh, clusters. Everybody here is gainfully employed. From those who sort out, from those who claim, from those you know, who buy, from those who sell. And um, I've been told that the fact that the border drill has been on has increased the capacity of all the mills. mills. And uh, it's gladly to note that we have brought about an economy which is aggressive, which is thriving. The story changed in August this year when the border drill drastically reduced smuggled rice, thus giving the entire rice production value chain a new lease of life. Within one week of the drill, every integrated rice miller exhausted the mill rice in their warehouses, recalled the staff that were laid off, and resumed production. Integrated mills produce about 150,000 bags of rice every day, translating to over 35 million bags annually. Adding that the 34 mills are expanding rapidly in order to increase capacity and meet the rising demands, all the small-scale rice clusters in all parts of the country are now back on stream and feeding the local communities. This is our first mill that was installed 10 years back. At a point, we have to stop running the mill because of the market. But after the closure of the border, we have to come back and restart it again in order to meet the demand of the market. This is the impact of the closure of the border. By so doing, the staff that we lay down have to be recalled back so that at least we can produce more to meet the demand of the market. So now we are going to the new mill that we have built. My name is Mohammed Abubakar. I'm the chairman of Umza Rice Mill. All the existing 34 rice mills that are in the country are now producing at maximum capacity, 24 hours a day. Nigeria's quest to achieve self-sufficiency in rice production will be quickened by the increasing activities in the rice production value chain, resulting from the border drill in four of the country's six geopolitical zones. Achieving self-sufficiency in rice production will also translate to more jobs for millions of our people, as well as cheaper and more nutritious rice for all Nigerians. That of Baichi will have access to the raw materials in the northeast. So we decided to hold on to this <coughs> until, we and then until we finish that one. Yes, sir. So, so sometimes in April, May this year, instead of the normal two shifts we run, we had to shut down to one, only one shift because there was no market. That was before the border closure. <coughs> but after immediately after the border closure, within two weeks, we had exhausted all we had in store. That is talking about the, the, the finished goods. And then the raw materials too. We had to start sourcing for raw materials. <clears throat> to the extent that we, at a point, we even thought of buying the locally processed and bring it down to mill. Fortunately for us, the dry season rice came in. So we, we bought the rice and then we continue milling till this moment. We we had we had a daily capacity. We had a staff strength of about 177 before the border closure. But after the border closure, our staff uh, strength grew to about 240 uh, 240 workers that are on our salary scale being paid on monthly basis. We also have <coughs> uh, casual workers that work with us on daily basis who are being paid on wages. We we, we pay them on daily basis and they are. <clears throat> capacity rose from 200 to 40 uh, and 40 to about 320 staff that we are being paid daily, depending on the the activity that is taking place. So you can see how it has the border closure has really impacted around the, around the value chain. I want to commend government tell, on this effort being made. Tell, yeah, tell us about your installed capacity right now. 320 metric tons per day. Mm -hmm. Metric tons. Yes, and we had an extension of 6,600 metric tons here and also in Bauchi. So next year, this time, God's willing, we have about uh, uh, 520 metric tons per day put together with the one in Bauchi and that of the one here. My name is Aliu Ali Ibrahim. Ali, Ali Ali Ibrahim. I'm the DMD of this company.
that the border drill has impacted positively on rice production in the country. According to the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, the farmers who are cultivating rice twice a year. Now, many rice farmers across the country have started three times a year cultivation in order to meet the increasing demand. This is phenomenal. And not this alone. The refund tells us that at least 6 million people, additionally, mostly youths, are now venturing into rice production, meaning that we could hit 18 million rice farmers in no time if the present trend continues. This is a positive fallout for the border drill. Operation Swift Response has had a significant impact on both the national economy as well as job creation in the three months of its existence. Six million new jobs are being created in the rice sector which, as we have seen, has experienced a significant increase in demand. The poultry sector has also grown phenomenally with tens of thousands of new jobs created and in the process of being created. There is also large-scale investments in increasing production capacity in this sector. In addition to increases in custom revenue at our ports to 5 billion and 8 billion naira daily, up from 4.5 billion naira before, the petroleum industry has experienced a significant consumption decrease of 6 million liters of PMS daily. Importantly, Incidents of insurgency have also decreased significantly due to the border drill.